Hariyom, my name is Satya. This video is an introduction to yoga for strong, healthy bones. Ongoing studies are showing that yoga asanas are very effective in preventing and even reversing bone loss, which leads to osteopenia and osteoporosis. In this class, I'll be sharing five poses from the Yoga for Osteoporosis series. You will need a chair, of course your yoga mat, a block, if you have one, a strap, and a folded blanket or a pillow will be good also. Let's begin. <laughs> You can start by sitting in your chair and sit away from the back of the chair so you can <clears throat> adjust your posture. Feet are grounded. And when we're sitting in a chair for our yoga practice, it's good to have about a 90 degree angle of flexion here at the knees. So if your chair is tall or your legs are short, you might need to put something underneath the feet to elevate them. Or if you're tall and the chair is short, you may, may need to sit on something <clears throat> so you can get the right adjustment. Have the hands resting on top of the legs. And we'll begin the practice with chanting Om together three times just to center our awareness and prepare for the practice. Closing the eyes. Focus on the breath. Gently bring the shoulders up and back. Please inhale for Om. Now opening the eyes, the first pose will be Tadasana, the mountain pose. We're going to start from sitting. So let's start with the feet, the foundation of all our standing poses. Look down at your feet and see that they're parallel underneath the knees, not more than hip width distance apart. Now just pick up the toes and spread them out as much as possible on the mat and press these edges underneath the big toe, pressing down underneath the little toe, pressing down. Then press down through the heel, the outside of the heel on both sides. Now, keeping that grounded foot, lift the arches here. Lifting the arches while you're pressing the corners of the feet down. That should cause these muscles in the legs to engage. The lower muscles, maybe the calves are engaging. And even if you really lift those arches, you'll feel it up into the quadriceps. That's the effort we want in the poses. Engaging the muscles causes a little stress, a good stress to the bones and stimulates new bone growth. So let's stand up now for Tadasana, the mountain pose. We'll start the same, spreading the toes, grounding through all the four corners of the feet, and then lifting the arches, 
pull up the kneecaps by engaging the quadriceps. Feel all the muscles in the leg engaged without squishing your toes. Keep them spread out and lift those arches. There's an effort there. Now into the pelvis area, we may need to lengthen the tailbone and feel like you're zipping here from the pubic bone up to the navel. A little core engaging here. Coming up to the rib cage, bring the shoulders up and back. Shoulders are over the hips. Now the head and neck. Lengthen the neck by bringing the ears back over the shoulders. You may have to bring the chin in a little bit. Top of the head is open towards the sky. Now go back mentally to the feet. See that they're staying active. Feel this engagement in the legs, buttocks, shoulder blades coming together behind. This is Tadasana. Now relax. <coughs> Shake out the legs a little. <coughs> Let's try that again with the block. Position the feet. Hold the block with the knees. The block is just between the knees and up against the thighs. Now go back to grounding through the feet, lifting the arches. The legs become engaged as you press into the block. Adjust the pelvis, shoulders up and back. Back of the neck lengthening. Check the feet, the arches are lifting. Breathe and hold. Tadasana, the mountain pose. It's a pose of balance and strength. Feel the strength and the muscles engaging. And relax. You can move the block and shake out the legs. Now let's sit down. Next pose will be warrior two pose. I think you're all familiar with this pose, but we're going to start the first version sitting on the chair. So I'm gonna move a chair <coughs> to the middle of the mat and sit on the chair, sit over to one side and open the leg out. You're away from the back of the chair so this thigh can be supported on the chair. The knee is at a right angle, foot is under the knee. The back leg stretches back foot to the floor. Now your leg may be out here, maybe back here. See what's comfortable for you. This whole front thigh is resting on the chair. We can hold the front of the chair with the front hand. Now you know in warrior two, the torso is to the front. Arm is, the back arm is stretching back at shoulder height. You can turn and look forward. We want the torso in the center, not leaning forward. And now engage the feet, spreading the toes, lifting the arches. And imagine you're going to stand up from this position. You'll feel the legs totally engaging here. And if you feel strong, you can bring the front arm out. Keep that lifting, breathe, and relax down. You feel that strengthening in the legs, the hips. Now for the other side, I'll show another slight variation. If you're having difficulty with that back leg, sometimes your chair seat might be in the way if it's too wide or whatever. And you can turn the chair slightly at an angle and raise up the height of your seat. So I'm going to sit a little bit diagonally on the chair. This leg is out, foot is under the knee, and now I can stretch this back leg out 
and it's not running into the chair or the back of the chair or the seat. So this might be a more comfortable position to have the chair on a diagonal. Now I can hold the back of the chair with the back hand and reach out forward. Spread the toes, lift the arches. Imagine standing up from the chair. You're pressing down, strengthening. It. When you want, you can release the back and breathe into the pose. Really lifting those arches, pressing the feet down. And relax down. Amazing how much strength you can get doing a pose sitting in a chair. Now we're going to do warrior two standing up. Still use the chair for support. Put the chair in the middle of the mat. Stand behind it. Let's take a wide stance. Toes are slightly turning inward. And take one foot and lift. Turn it out 90 degree angle. Now you can hold the chair for support as you bring this forward knee into the lunge position. Knee should be directly over the second toe. Arch is lifting here, toes are spreading. Foot is strong. You can bring this arm out. Maybe this is a good pose for you just like this. Press into the back foot. You can bring the torso back to center and maybe you're ready to let go and hold the pose or use the chair, whatever works for you. Breathe and hold. And slowly coming back to center, shake out the legs. If you're working with these poses, we want to try to hold the pose a minimum of 30 seconds each for the maximum benefit, between 30 seconds and 60 seconds for each pose gives the most, the maximum benefit. So let's move to the other side, stepping wide, open the foot out to a 90 degree angle, use your chair for support and come in to the lunge position. Activate the feet by lifting the arches, spreading the toes, press into the outside of that back foot. Check that you're keeping the torso in the center. Front arm can come out. Breathing. When you're ready, you can bring the back arm out and hold. Lifting those arches keeping the legs strong and slowly come back to center bring the feet together now you can move the chair back and come and sit on the chair the next pose is a forward, a type of forward bending pose from a sitting position. In yoga for osteoporosis, we protect the back from rounding in the forward bending by doing the poses either sitting in a chair or lying on the back. So for this pose, <coughs> it's a hamstring stretch and it's a variation of Supta Padangustasana. <coughs> You want to be able to sit back against the back of the chair so you can use that support to press into the back of the chair. Take your strap, your feet are grounded here, and take the strap, wrapping it around the right foot, just around the ball of the foot, and hold the strap in both hands. Now you're going to lift the back and press into the back of the chair 
and press this a grounded foot down as though you're trying to stand up and then lift the leg knee is straight ankle is flexed arms are strong you're pressing the sitting bones down into the chair pressing the back against the back of the chair pressing the opposite foot into the floor the whole back body is engaged if your leg doesn't come up that far you can lengthen the strap and still try to keep the knee straight now release that shake out the legs we'll do the other side <coughs> Another version of this pose, you can be leaning against the back of the chair or you could come and sit forward on the chair. So you have to use your strength to lengthen and hold the back up and maintain that lumbar curve. So let's try that on this side. Grounding through the right foot and lift the leg hold the strap and now use the leverage to pull the back up breathe arms are strong back is strong breathe and hold Relax the shoulders down. Don't hold tension in the neck or shoulders. Adjust the length of the strap so that you can keep your knees straight. And then let's release that pose. Now we can put the strap down. Just take a breath. Next pose we'll be doing is a sitting twist. Twists are very good for strengthening the whole vertebral column and the hips. Excellent poses. I'm going to sit on the side of the chair with the feet grounded. Spine is lengthening. Now activate the feet. Keep the legs strong. Inhale, and on the exhale, begin to turn towards the back of the chair. You can use your hands to support the twist without pressing or pushing or pulling. Just a very slight traction on the back of the chair, twisting. With the breath, inhale to lengthen, exhale to twist. Make sure your shoulders are not tensing up, chest is open, feet are pressing into the floor. And slowly release back to center, shake out the legs. Now we'll do the other side. We have to switch to the other side of the chair. And for this, I'll show the version with the block. You can have the same sitting position and hold the block between the knees. That helps to keep the alignment and it helps for grounding through the feet. So find your starting position. Inhale, lengthening. Use the hands on the back of the chair to gently move into the twist. Keep the shoulders open. Head is turning. Press into the block with the knees and press into the floor with the feet. And slowly coming back, release the block and stand up, move your chair to the end of 
one end of the mat and we're going to come down onto the floor. You can have your block nearby. And let's lie back in on the back with the knees bent and the feet on the floor in the constructive rest pose. Just take a full breath here and completely relax. The next pose is our backward bending pose, which is the bridge pose. Probably you're familiar with this from your Hatha Yoga. The first version is very gentle bridge pose. We'll use the block for support. Have the feet parallel and the knees not more than hip width distance apart. Press on the feet and take the block at its lowest height and slide it underneath the sacrum. It should be down towards the tailbone and buttocks, not up in the low back area. Feet are grounded. Bend the elbows to a 90 degree and have the palms facing inward. Press into the feet, press into the elbows, inhale and lift. Lift the sacrum right up off the block, breathe and hold. And when you need to, release down. This is a gentle way to build up strength. You can repeat and hold as long as it's comfortable. Inhale, press the feet down and lift. And release. And one more time, inhale, lift. And release. Remove the block. Let the back relax in a neutral position. Now, if that's comfortable for you, you can go on to the next version. We're, uh, it's a little stronger. We're going to hold the block in between the knees and thighs. Feet are planted. Spread the toes, lifting the arches, and have the elbows bent, palms facing in. Inhale, press the feet, press the elbows, lift the whole spine up. Chest is coming towards the chin. Elbows are pressing down. And now press into the heels and imagine you're trying to slide the heels and feet forward. And that traction engages the whole back body quadriceps, buttocks, hamstrings, legs are totally engaged, chest is lifting, elbows are pressing down. And slowly release the pose, bring the block out to the side. You can just bring the knees up to the chest if you like, roll a little from side to side. We'll be moving into a relaxation pose now. You could relax in a regular savasana, or you can move into the legs on the chair pose. You can take your chair, or maybe you have your couch or easy chair in your living room. I'm going to put a blanket over the edge of this chair and then sitting very close to the edge of the chair, come onto the back and bring the lower legs up onto the chair, seat of the chair. Adjust the position so the knees are as close to 90 degrees of flexion and the hip socket also is about a 90 degree angle here. We're going to relax here for about five minutes and allow the body to assimilate and integrate 
the benefits of these poses. When you relax after the effort of the yoga poses, the body, the body's intelligence strengthens the areas that were making the effort and releases any toxins that were exposed during the asanas. It's a beautiful opportunity to integrate the practice into the entire system. You can have your hands resting gently on the belly, or you might like the palms up out to the sides. If you like to put a pillow under your head, that would be fine. Or you might even like your arms up, stretching out a little bit. Whatever feels comfortable for you. Take your awareness to the breath. Let go of any unnecessary thoughts. And just take this time to completely relax. If you have the time, you could just pause the video and relax for longer in this position. Or you could begin to wake up the body, bringing the knees towards the chest, sliding away from the chair, and just gently rock the legs from side to side. Roll over onto one side and come back up to sitting. Let's come back up to sitting in our chair where we started the practice. Sitting comfortably. Just close the eyes, mentally scan the body. 
see how it feels after this practice. And have some slow, deep breaths. Exhale fully. Inhale deeply. Exhale slowly. Have a few rounds of Dirga Swasam, the yogic deep breathing. It's energizing the system, calming the mind. And with your next exhale, just relax the breath, close the eyes, sit comfortably in the stillness and silence. Om Shanti Shanti, Shanti, Om, peace, peace, peace be unto all. Hari Om, Tatsat, Om Shanti. Jai Shri Satguru Maharaj Ki Jai. Hari Om. Thank you all for joining with this practice today. If you would like more information or instruction in yoga for osteoporosis, you can look on our webpage and find the courses and trainings, Yoga for Strong Healthy Bones or Yoga for Osteoporosis. We offer them throughout the year at different times. And you always could contact me directly at this site. Enjoy your day. Hari Om. <laughs>